Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to solve one of the hardest problems in physics, which is a square of charges, and we wanna find the net force on one of those charges. So here's what the setup looks like. You have four charges, could be positive, could be negative, set up in a square. And now I'm going to assign values to these charges. Like let's say this one is six microcoulombs. Let's say this one is 10 microcoulombs. Down here we have negative two microcoulombs, and over here we have negative four microcoulombs. And frankly, the charges really don't matter. It's not going to affect our process. And by the way, if it asked for the electric field instead of the net electric force, it's basically the exact same setup. But here's what we got to do now. I'm going to give you which charge that I want you to find the net force on. And it doesn't matter which of these four, I'll just choose the top left arbitrarily and I would like to find the net force on this top left charge. The way we do this is you need to use superposition. What on earth does that mean? It means that you are going to look at the force between these two charges first, then add it to the force between these two charges second, and then add that answer to the force between these two charges third. Also, the order doesn't matter. You can do this in any order you want but we do have to treat each of these separately. So there's three forces I care about. We'll call them force one, force two, and in green, force three. One more thing I also need to tell you is the distance between all these charges. Since it's a square, let's say each of these charges is one millimeter apart. So with that, we have everything we need to answer this question. Let's get started. I'm first gonna find the force, and let me erase the other colors for a second. I'm first going to find the force between the six microcoulomb and the negative four microcoulomb. And when I find this force, it's not just important the number that I get after I plug in my calculator, but it's also important the direction that I get. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So first we're gonna use Coulomb's law, which says that the force is equal to KQ1, Q2 over R squared. When I write this equation, I normally like to have absolute values around my charges because I'm going to be figuring out the positive or negative by hand by thinking about like charges repel, opposite charges attract. I'm gonna figure out the sign that way instead. So K is a constant, nine times 10 to the ninth. Charge one is six microcoulombs, so that's six times 10 to the minus six, because micro means 10 to the minus six. And then for charge two, that's gonna be negative four times 10 to the minus six. But again, I have absolute value here, so I'm just gonna write times four, positive four times 10 to the minus six. That's my numerator. In the denominator, I have one millimeter. So that's one times 10 to the minus third, because milli means minus third, and that's gonna be squared. I should also mention, why is the distance one millimeter? I think it's obvious, but just in case you don't see it, this is a square. Each of the sides are one millimeter apart from each other, that's why. So now I can just plug this into calculator, and I can get my first force. And I got an answer of force one equals 216,000 units or newtons. And even more important, or at least equally as important, as the number answer, I also need to figure out which direction this is gonna point, our options being up, down, left, or right. So looking at these two charges, these are opposite charges, because one's positive, one's negative. Opposite charges attract, so that charge will want to go down, that charge will want to go up. But since I want the net force on the six microcoulomb only, I'm actually going to ignore the other charge entirely and just say that the net force is going to be pointing downward because it's attracting. And what that means when I write it next to my answer, I'm going to be writing negative y hat because y hat means up or down and negative y hat means down. So this is perfect. We have our first force squared away. Next, we're going to find our second force which is going to be between the positive six and the positive 10 microcoulomb. So for force two, we're gonna have force two equals K, which is a constant. Q1 is again, the six times 10 to the minus six. It's the first charge. The second charge is positive 10 times 10 to the minus six, easy. And then divided by the distance again is one times 10 to the minus third, and that whole thing squared. And K is still nine times 10 to the ninth, so again, I can plug this in my calculator and I can get force two. This part's the easy part. It looks like I'm going to get 540,000 newtons for force two 
And then what I think about is that pointing to the left, right, up, or down. It looks like we have like charges here, and we know that like charges repel. So the six microcoulombs going to want to go that way, and the 10 microcoulomb is going to want to go that way. But I don't care about the 10. I only care about the force on the six. Looks like that points to the left, and left, of course, is negative x hat. So that's what I'm going to write right here. So there, force one is down, force two is down. Now we just need force three. And this is the worst one because it's along the diagonal and we usually don't like when that happens. So first we're gonna figure out the formula. Looks like it's going to be force three equals K, which is nine times 10 to the ninth, times charge one, six times 10 to the minus six. Charge two is negative two, but I'm just gonna make it positive two anyway. Two times 10 to the minus six for coulombs and then divided by the distance, one times 10 to the minus third squared. And if you write this, this of course is wrong for the distance. And the reason why, we're no longer one millimeter away because this diagonal is longer than one millimeter. If you want to find the total, you have to remember that this is a right triangle right now where that distance is one millimeter, that distance is one millimeter, and I have this beautiful right triangle right here which means I can use Pythagorean theorem. So in other words, the distance squared is equal to one times 10 to the minus third squared plus one times 10 to the minus third squared because both other legs are one millimeter long. So that means D squared is two times 10 to the minus six. And then we've got to take the square root of that, of course. And it looks like the distance is 1.41 times 10 to the minus third. There's our distance that I'm actually going to be plugging in right here. It's actually 1.41 times 10 to the minus third. And now I have everything to solve for F3. So let's see what I get after I plug it in my calculator. And I got an answer of approximately 54,000 newtons. And then for the direction, this is the not fun part. The reason why is if you think about this, we would say that these are opposite charges. One's positive, one's negative. So they should be attracted to one another. And, and again, I don't care about the other charge. I only care about the six microcoulomb. But since it's along the diagonal, you can't just say x hat or y hat. I'm gonna be saying positive x hat and negative y hat because it's right and it's down. So for right now, I'm not keeping this for long, but I'm going to be writing x hat and negative y hat. The reason why I can't keep this for long is because whenever you have a vector at an angle in physics, you have to break it up in the x and y components. So that's what I'm gonna be doing right now. I start by drawing a right triangle, where that's the hypotenuse, 54,000. I need to find the x leg and the y leg. And since this was a square, and if you think about it, the diagonal here has to split it up into a 45, 45, 90, right triangle. And again, that's because we had a square. So now if I want to find X, I would say X is going to use cosine because it's the adjacent leg. Cosine 45 degrees equals X over 54,000. Remember cosine is adjacent X over hypotenuse 54,000. So if I want to solve for X, multiply 54,000 on both sides and we will get X equals I'm gonna to round to 38,200, and this is the positive x hat, and we know that because earlier when I had my answer, it was positive x hat and negative y hat. And now if I wanna find the y value, I'm just gonna use sine, basically the same thing, y over 54,000 this time. And again, this makes sense because sine is the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. So that means y is going to be 54,000 times the sine of 45 degrees. And after I plug that in my calculator, you get the exact same answer. Isn't that convenient? 38,200, but that's gonna be negative y hat. And this is really my force, F3. It's both of them. We have to consider both components. So now we have three different answers going on here. I'm gonna write them side by side right now. We said force one was 216,000 negative y hat, which I can just write, you know, the negative out in front and put y hat there. That's perfectly fine. Force two, we said was 540,000, and that was negative x hat. So again, I'll put the negative right there. 
and then x hat. And then force three, we just got two answers for. I'm gonna write both. For the x direction, it was positive 38,200 x hat. And then for the y direction, it was negative 38,200 y hat. And now if I wanna find the total vector, I need to add all these components together, the x components and the y components separately, of course. So that means force total is going to be negative 540,000 plus 38,200. When I plug that in my calculator, I get negative 501,800, and that's x hat. And now for the y hat, I'm doing negative 216,000 minus 38,200. And that will give me a final answer of negative 254,200, and that's y hat. And this right here would be the answer if the question accepted it in component form, x and y hat, but usually the question doesn't ask for that. Normally the question asks for magnitude and direction. And so for that reason, I'm gonna help you find that right now. This is the last step in this behemoth of a problem. So first I'm gonna make a right triangle. Notice since x is negative and y is negative, I'm going to draw one line to the left and one line down, and then the hypotenuse connects that way. Here's my angle theta right here, because again, I started right here and then went left 500, 1,800, and then I went down 254,200. And by the way, it doesn't matter anymore if you have the negatives here or not. The reason why it doesn't matter is because when I use Pythagorean theorem to solve for the hypotenuse, C, when I say A squared plus B squared equals C squared, even if it was negative before, you square it, it becomes positive, so it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna say 501,800 squared plus 254,200 squared equals C squared. And then using Pythagorean theorem to solve for C, I end up getting a final answer of C equals 562,500 approximately. I don't care about the exact number, but this is good enough. So this is the magnitude in Newtons, which magnitude simply means size, the number part. And now if I wanna find the direction, I'm gonna use tangent of theta. Why tangent? Because tangent is the opposite leg over the adjacent leg, and I have both of those. So that's exactly what I'm gonna write right here. Tangent theta equals the opposite leg, 254,200 divided by 501,800. And again, I don't care about the negative signs. I'm gonna take care of it, and I'll explain that in a minute. But now to solve for theta, I gotta take the arc tangent of both sides, and that will give me an answer of theta equals 26.9 degrees. And again, because I know theta has to be this angle, I'm saying it's below the negative x-axis. What do I mean below the negative x-axis? Well, remember, this is really on like a coordinate grid, or this is positive x, this is positive y, this is negative x, this is negative y. And if you're confused by that, let me just remind you, theta, the angle we said was down and to the left. And so if you're down and to the left, then you're below the negative x-axis. And basically, I'm just gonna write that right here, 26.9 degrees below the negative x-axis. And there's our answer for the angle. And by the way, if you wanted your answer counter clockwise from the positive x-axis, because sometimes they'll ask this as well. Let me just go back up to my drawing right here. If this is the positive x-axis right here, and if you think about it, this is 180 degrees, then you just take theta and add 180 degrees, not too bad. Your final answer would be 180 plus 26.9, giving us 206.9 degrees measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. Sometimes they ask for this, sometimes they don't, so I'm just preparing you for everything. And yeah, that's basically it. Again, this is one of the hardest examples in all of Physics 2, so if you got this right, then hopefully nothing's gonna stump you up when it comes time for the exam. So thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.